David Schnellwar, guru in our forums. Let's take a look at the category of best new artist for the Grammys. This is a tough one because, again, it has that committee that decides who's nominated. Sometimes there's some big, shocking omissions. But comparing the predictions that you have with uh, Double D, Darren Dorch, other moderator, that you guys agree on Carrie Hilson, Laura Isabor, Owl City, and the Zach Brown Band. Oh, he agrees about Alice and I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where you disagree is you're going with um, Demi Lovato. Lovato? How yes, Lovato. That? And he's going She's with from MGMT. The Disney MGMT. Channel. Oh, Who are MGMT. these people? Who are these people? <laughs> Explain oh, Demi these Lovato. Kids. The only reason I have Demi Lovato in my predictions, she's the only new... I'm not saying she deserves to be there. I'm just saying she debuted at number one on the Billboard album chart. So when something like that happens, it's noteworthy. She's not a lock. And there's another teen... She's really aimed at teens. She was from Disney's Camp Rock, same way the Jonas Brothers. I just thought instantly she could be a seat filler for them. Um, there's this Justin Bieber who has also a chance. I don't really know how to describe him. They're trying to make him the next Justin Timberlake and Usher. He is possible. It's not definite. MGMT well, is alternative. Yeah, MGMT, talk about that. Is, uh, because that's where... Mm -hmm. Dance. I'm not really confident about them. I, I'm surprised they're on the list. They are possible. I mean, the best new artist race, they have thrown curveballs where, curve where we say, like, who is that? Like, they did with Lettucey, and they did with Susan Tedeschi, and they did with Imogene Heap, where we had to look them up afterwards, because they might be, like, too new to <laughs> known. But this is the weakest... In, yeah. This is the weakest and bleakest that since I've been following the Grammys in the past 20 years. It's anyone is possible. Well, we say there's that no every year. Runner, hey, there's hey, no hey, hey. I know. Here's, here's what I, I'm going to go out on a real limb. I mean, you know, because you know the Grammys, this is quite a limb. I'm going to say David Cook will be the fifth nominee in, oh, he on is, my list. I'm going to agree with you on four of the other five. But no, here's why we know it's unlikely, though. That is, only one American Idol champ has ever been nominated. Kelly Clarkson wasn't even nominated here. Carrie Underwood was, and of course she won. That was terrific. But it's if there's a it's against Idol winners at the Grammys, isn't there? And I, but I, I think that David Cook is close. He was on. What he was think? a musical guest on Saturday Night Live this season, this past season, this year, and. Into his videos on VH, it is very possible, and it is a weekend year where he in. He's not a lock. It is, I, I agree with you. He is very possible. And do you have the rest of my possibilities on that list? Oh, Owl City has currently the number one song. I do, but, on give, the, but, give, on the, but hold on, hold on, David. Hold on. Stop. Stop right, right there. Uh, there was an audio problem. Go through. Give yeah, us your David Cook you. answer again. Oh, okay. David right, Cook so, is uh, very. Do it again one more time. Okay. Tell me when. Now, um, David, David Cook is very possible. He was a musical guest on Saturday Night Live this past season. He's had two videos played on VH1. He is on Adult Top 40 and Adult Contemporary Radio. It is possible. It's a weak enough year where he could sneak in. He is not definite, though. He's not definite. Here's who else is on your list of possibilities. I've got the notes here. David doesn't. You've got uh, Carolina Liar. Yes. Uh, Melanie Fiona. Aaron McCarley, Ashton a Asher Roth, the script mm -hmm. and the Ting Tings. I'm starting to think the script has a better chance now. They're a, they're a, they're a band with three members, and they're from Ireland. They have a song that's getting a lot of play right now called "Break Even." Their first single was called "The Man Who Can't Be Moved." They might squeak in there. Carolina Liar was on VH1 as well as the script was, and they had that song "Show Me What I'm Looking For." It might carry over. Um, I, I didn't write um, Gloriana. They're another country group, but I think Zach Bra Brown Band is actually the only lock. Erin McCarley, I listed. She's really good. She should get more airplay. She's a singer-songwriter from, I think, Tennessee. I might be wrong. Um, she had a song called Love Save the Empty. The rest of her album is really good, but she doesn't get enough airplay enough to say, like, oh, definite. But VH1 did play her. Mm -hmm. um, this Melanie Fiona is, I assume... R&B, but this Laura Isabar has more of a chance than her because they nominated other jazzy, jazz-related R&B-like artists in that category in the past. Carrie Hilson seems to be a lock, but I'm not confident about her. She 
she had a song that was pretty big with Neo and Kanye West called Knock You Down. And it, it was, she had two other minor hits. She ha, she's a songwriter and writ, written songs for various artists. She collaborates with Timbaland a lot. A lot of people in the forums think she's definite. She is very possible. This uh, uh, process we're doing here, trying to predict the nominees, is uh, we, typical, of course, yeah. because we have this we have this weird. Oh, let me just. Uh, you wanted to mention someone else? Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to mention Owl City. They currently have the number one song for the second time, um, not consecutively, on the Billboard charts, Billboard Hot 100. It's Fireflies is getting a lot of airplay, and it's at the right time, so it could carry over for a nomination. It's, he's not a group. He's one artist. I mean, it's one of these names like Feist that's one artist when it sounds like a group. Same with Fire for Fighting. So it, he seems to be possible right now. Groups don't do well in this category. Of course, uh, Maroon 5 won in the past. Uh, Evanescence was defined as a group. We know that that was really just Amy Lee, so, so she had that uh-huh. kind of solo female bias here, which is what tends to win here. Almost always the winner in this category is a solo female artist. Rare exceptions like John Legend have occurred. But, but uh, uh, and we'll talk about that in one second, but while I have this on my mind, could it happen, David, do you think it's possible that the winner of this category could come back and compete again that Darius Rucker, previous winner as Hootie and the Blowfish, now that he's a solo artist, could he be nominated? He should be. I don't think he was submitted, though. That's the one problem with him. But he should be. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, I, was, I, was, course, I was hoping he would be. Yeah, because he, he won with, as part of Hootie in 1996-97. But now looking over this list and, and dealing with this female bias for solo artists in this category, do we have a front runner? No, I don't think we even have, like, definite locks to be nominated. This is the most up in the air I could remember in the past 20 years. I mean, we've had this decade, we've had a couple of weak years where it was obvious and there were some head scratchers when they picked the nominees, but this year is really anything's possible. Of course, do they even want to win? This is the kiss of death category, of course. The, the I don't Millie really Vanilli understand. categories. Yeah. Uh, we've had the Beatles and Bette Midler win in the past, but we've also had the Starland vocal band and Mark Cohn not too long ago and uh, uh, many other people who immediately fall off to obscurity. Where is Paula Cole these days? Uh, <laughs> so it's while it's considered one of the four top awards at the Grammys, it's not always the best one to win. I don't. I don't take this category that seriously. I feel like they do do this category because if what we spoke about in our last recording, if they just keep awarding the same like U2 and Beyonce over and over, this is the one category where they could say someone new is winning. Otherwise, it could just be the rich get richer and no no rookies win. Mm-hmm. That, that's the only thing I could think about it. Otherwise, the category – and people don't really understand the definition of it overall. Is it the best new artist of the year? Is it the next best thing? Like, is it someone 10 years from now, 10 years from now we say, like, we'll still be around and, and, and reflect and say who deserved to win? They're not really clear with, because of the year is not at the end, it's not best new artist of the year in the title. So it's, everything's just assumed. But if that's the only Grammy an artist won, like a Paula Cole or a Mark Cohn, it doesn't really say much. I mean, they are considered a Grammy winner, but it doesn't really, I, I don't really, like, when I tally up, I really don't really consider that one it is the award you really don't really want to win because it has been a jinx but for every yeah for every jinx like this year they have been right about like alicia keys or Nora jones or john legend or maroon five or right, they, re- recently they actually have have done pretty well but let's uh, talk about some of the losers like elton john and others of the years it's it's often quite embarrassing who doesn't win oh i'd have to look that over no there are quite a few that yeah, yeah. They, they have they have made really bad mistakes in the past Right, right, this category is notorious for it, but that's okay. Showbiz awards are all about goofs as well as wins, and that's why we love. But them. I, I, so. I will say this: I think I think Zach Brown Band seems to be the one lock because they usually have a representative from country. I'm not saying they're going to win, but they seem to be the only lock. I, just when I said there was no lock, but they they just assumed to be. Okay, thanks, David.